Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. I am on my way to our monthly group ride that I've been hosting for about, I guess, one year and nine months now. Maybe a bit more than that. So we're on our way. We host it every last Friday of the month. And in this video, I want to kind of tell you my story as to how I did that to maybe help you guys out if you don't have a community or a type of a ride in your town. Now one thing I want to make clear is I'm not like an expert organizer or bike organizer or whatever you want to call it. I've never done a race or anything big like that. I've only been I've only been doing this for about like I said one year and one one year and nine months now. But I do think I've had pretty good success. We're regularly getting now around 25 people and every week it seems to be growing recently. And I think I figured out kind of a few things that really have helped and got the ball rolling so to speak. And that's what I want to share with you. Look at that beautiful house, right across from the river. What a place to live. Now speaking of places to live, this is the city of Titusville. This is where I've lived for the past couple years. I kind of off and on grew up here. Hang on, stop sign. Now Titusville is kind of a middle-sized town, I guess, or city. We have 50,000 people, maybe on the small side, really. And it's an older demographic. So it's also, you could say, not the most active group, not the most active city, you know? Look at these beautiful houses. Amazing, and right by the river. Amazing view, but I would be scared if a hurricane comes, but those are old, those are super old. But anyway, I got a couple things I wanted to show you that I got. Got this bell. And I got these gloves. The Rock Bros company sent me an email a couple weeks ago or so and asked me if I wanted some free gear. You know, you know how it goes on YouTube? I said, of course, I'm not gonna turn down free gear. But it also made it clear I'm not gonna do a commercial for them. But then I would work it into some videos the best I can. So there you go, here's the gloves. I've only had a couple pair of cycling gloves in my life before so I'm not an expert but these are nice they're very comfortable I've come to learn I like fingerless gloves best at least for road biking and gravel and uh, yeah these are really good they fit me perfectly they're size US medium which was I think was Asian large and uh, my hands are medium so they fit like a glove I like them and it came in just just and it came just in time because my other ones were pretty much worn out the other thing is that bell. I like it. I won't say it's the best though. I don't think it's the one to get. Uh, Rock Bros themselves sell another one, which I'll show here, which I bought from them a long time ago. And I actually like it better. Now this one's good. If you kind of like that stealth look maybe, maybe this is what you go for, but it's not quite as loud, I don't think, as the other, and it doesn't quite feel as nice as the other that they also sell which is a clone of another one. But it does sound pretty good. And the good, it is better than a lot of the cheapos that I've had before. I can say that, it's good. It's just not great like the other one is. It's good. It, it carries the sound. I, well, this is really bumpy. So I'm jumping on sidewalk. It carries the sound really nicely. Although it's not the loudest, I don't think either. And the quality, it's good, but it doesn't feel great like the other one. The other one's like all metal. It's just, I think, better. <laughs> I'll put a link to all that stuff uh, with my affiliate account down there in case you would like to purchase that. I think they have a couple other items that I'm gonna be checking out too, but I haven't received those yet. 
Okay, we're gonna arrive a little bit early to my ride I'm hosting. And I'm doing that because one of the riders, she needed help with her wheel. So that's one thing that I like to do is to help people out when I can. I'm, I'm even too early for that though, but she's supposed to arrive early and we'll see if we can figure out what's going on. So sorry about the cicada bugs. That, um, as Clint Gibbs said in one of his recent videos, that's just Florida. We just have that, unfortunately. All right, as I said before, I'm not like the most expert, you know, organizer of rides and stuff like that. And in fact, the ride that I'm hosting now, and I've been hosting for a year and nine months, was actually somebody else's ride. And maybe there was rides before. And there are other rides in the city, I know. Originally, it was a critical mass event, and I started attending it. Now, the ladies who were organizing it, I think they moved away, or maybe one of them got tired of doing it. I'm not really sure the whole story, but... They basically did a post on their Facebook page asking if anybody else would like to take it over. And nobody wanted to do it. And so I kind of felt like, it's not that I had to, but I had the urge to keep the community going. I love cycling. I love seeing people out on their bike. And uh, yeah, so I was like, I feel like I should do it. And I didn't plan to live here in Titusville even that long, but I've been here now a year and nine months, so I'm keeping it going. Hopefully when I leave, somebody else will take it over. So the first thing I did so the first thing I did after I kind of took over the organization of the group is I went ahead and made a Facebook group, not just a page. That way other people would be able to, to talk in the group and not just be a one directional communication. It's, it's, a, it's a conversation, you know? That's what I wanted, a conversation. So I created a Facebook group. Later on I created a Strava club and an email list pretty recently and all that's worked out pretty well. Everybody's liked it. Most people are on Facebook. Some use the email group because they don't want to be on Facebook or don't check it very much. So I made that available to everybody. And I'm the one that has to kind of stay on top of it, moderate to make sure that spammers aren't in there. I mean, I have to be on there pretty much every day approving people. Right now we have 350 members, I think. And uh, it's growing quite quickly. And especially in the beginning, those type of like electronic platforms are really kind of what let everybody know what's going on when the events are and all that stuff so for me i started off with just the last friday friday of the month ride which we're doing right now for us it's a eight to nine mile ride we do two different rides we alternate one kind of through the city and one kind of outside the city and they're all really chill paced i used to not write the speed but now i write 10 miles an hour just to keep it super slow and super, super welcoming to everybody who wants to join later on now we've actually probably in the past nine months let's just say this year we've started doing a gravel ride too which has been a lot of fun and that's also once a month but on a different week it's the second thursday of the month and we've had a lot of fun with that and inside that we're having two different speeds we have a, a what we call a party pace thanks russ for that and a spicy pace which is like around 15 miles an hour and that's been awesome and hugely successful i think last time we had 25 people join which was amazing. So that's another thing I want to get to. Oh, here's a couple of the riders. You need to pick a style. So you got to pick a style of riding you want to do and communicate it well, because a lot of people won't know, you know, how fast you're supposed to go and things like that. All right, I got to let you go because some of the folks are here. I'd to greet everybody. Yep, face this way, right into the sun. Right into the sun. <laughs> Sorry, hope you have your sunnies. Hey, we're doing a photo over here, everybody. Oh, okay. No way, Bruce! Hey, John, how's it going, What's man? Up, man? Well, the word is getting out. Yeah, you ain't kidding. Here we go. Okay, guys, it's been a few days since we last talked. The group ride went awesome. We had a record number, 35 participants show up. We would have had two more, but uh, one guy and his son, one of their bikes had a broken chain, so they were out. But anyway, today I'm trying to get a little bit of gravel riding in before the rain. We're just now riding up Max Brewer Bridge. absolutely the biggest climb here in Titusville anyway I'm on my mountain bike today because 
where I'm gonna try to ride is kind of a new area for me. I don't really know if you can ride there or not, so it's kind of an exploration today. Here we go on the downside. Okay, we're out here at Gator Creek Road. <clears throat> it's just over the bridge. There's the bridge over there. I'm not sure if you can see it because this has a very wide angle. The gravel is pretty nice out here. It is very, very smooth. As you can see, there's really no chunks at all. The only thing you have to watch out for are potholes. And there are cars out here up to a point. There is a gate where the cars can't pass, but um, a lot of it, there is car traffic, although not very much. But anyway, I think what I was saying before is you need to make sure you're very, or you should try to be very clear and explicit about all the events. Because if you're doing like I'm doing, which is trying to get a lot of new riders, they don't know anything. Like they don't have any clue about nothing a lot of times. Sometimes, a lot of times they're like, oh, I'm gonna get my bike out of the garage for the first time in 10 years or whatever. And so they're gonna ask like all the questions. So you wanna add like all the detail in there. What, what kind of tires might be required? For instance, out here, I get that question sometimes like, oh, I have a road bike. Is that gonna be, is that gonna be okay? Or is my beach cruiser okay or whatever? Well, I've also hosted some other rides. Like I've experimented with one I called like Bruce's Adventure, which is kind of a weird funky ride. Uh, it was pretty far. It was like a few hours or something. But very few people showed up to that. I think they were mostly just, the group that we have established is more uh, like party pace. And so they were a lot of them intimidated by that type of ride, I think. So that one didn't really do that great this year, but I might try it again next year. I've also hosted a free bike repair day. So uh, I'll get to this detail in a little bit later. But basically it was a day where me and one other guy in the group were just fixing bikes from like nine till noon. And I advertised it everywhere. And uh, quite a few people showed up. I don't even remember the number. It was like 25, 30 uh, repairs we did that day. And it was actually a lot of fun and we're definitely gonna do that next year. I'm thinking in the spring. And here's a tip. If you ever do a repair day like that, buy inner tubes like in every size 12 inch, 16 inch, 24 inch, 20 inch, 26 inch, beach cruiser inner tubes, 28, whatever. Get all of them and then you can sell them. You know, you can decide if you want to do a profit or not, but I basically sold them for just a dollar more than I paid for each one. And uh, cause in my experience the last time we did it, like 90% of the people just had punctured inner tubes or punctured inner tubes and brakes that were not, you know, set up right. So anyway, as I was trying to say, um, yeah, you, I ended up with some extra money. I think we got like $40 in tips and I split it with the other mechanic. Uh, and it's not like we were asking for them. I didn't have a tip jar. I didn't ask anybody, but some people were just like, I don't know. They felt like because we did work for them, they wanted to give us some money. So I had a few people give us like $10, $5, stuff like that. So that was really cool. And anyway, what am I trying to say? Where are we going with all this? So I don't remember how I said it or what I said before, but basically you need to use the social medias. I don't really use Instagram that much, but I'm going to start. But right now the biggest one is definitely Facebook. Then the second one is um, email. The email list, I think we have like, I don't know, 30, 40 people on the email list. So every time I create an event, I also send out an email to the email list. I put everybody in BCC to try to keep their privacy a little bit. I told them at the beginning, this list isn't uh, isn't any kind of advertising list. I'm not gonna sell it. I'm not gonna use it for anything else. And when we're done with it, I'll just delete it because, and I, need, I don't even have anyone's name connected to it. So uh, I have an Excel sheet, just a simple single column with a bunch of emails in it. So uh, that's all it is. It's just to inform folks of the events that are coming up. So, yeah, I know I'm rambling. I don't know if I've ever rambled this much about a topic, but it's just kind of all over the place. And I'm sorry if it seems like I'm yelling, it's, it's pretty windy out here. And I really hope it's not screwing up my audio. But anyway, my next point is try to connect up with some or one local business. That can be like coffee shops, breweries, bike shops would be great. Our biggest partner is a brewery who just, uh, one of the riders, knew some no actually works there or is part owner or something like that 
and uh, they wanted to help advertise for us. So they ha it's a uh, it's called um, the Hardware Store Playlander Brewery up here in North Titusville. They have some like big monitors, like 42 inch whatever big flat screens inside the establishment, and they made an ad for us and they put it up and yeah. Anyway, so they help us out with advertising. They also do some posts on their Instagram. And that's definitely helped uh, bring up some of the participation. There's, a, you could also partner with, like I said, coffee shops I think are great, and bike shops would be another great option. Just go in there, explain to them what you're doing, what you're trying to do, like what's your goal. Which for me is, it, it goes something like this. I love cycling, it's like my favorite activity. I think it's so good for people, I think it's good for the world, and I, I just want, I wanna share what I've come to love so much. And so I'm trying to bring people into the activity in an easy, approachable way. And from then they can kind of decide if they want to go further with it, do racing or any other aspect of the activity or sport. So that's kind of my thing. And I, and I tell people that often, oh, here's a fisherman. Morning. Wow, it's beautiful out here. Look how dark those clouds are. I might be getting some big time rain though. I'm not that worried about rain, but what I don't want is lightning. I don't know if you can see it, probably not because this is such a wide angle camera, but that's the uh, NASA vehicle assembly building out there called the VAB. <clears throat> that boat right there is an abandoned crashed boat. We had some hurricanes some years ago and there's still boats like crashed up crashed out around here now I don't know if you can sense it in my voice at some point or not but this city Titusville I have a long history with I know it well but it's honestly not my favorite place um, that said where we are now Gator Creek it's technically Merritt Island but you know it's still in the Titusville area to me this is like where we are right now this is the best part of this area we don't have mountains we don't have like a ton of forest at least what I consider forest but this right here, this is my favorite place. And it's just, it is beautiful. And it's super quiet, not many people out here, especially once you pass that gate. Today, I'm trying to discover for myself a new route, which is a loop essentially. And I'm like 90% sure you're allowed to do it, that it's, a, it's an actual route. But I think it's very, very seldom traveled. In fact, I looked at uh, Strava heat map and nobody was going there. So a lot of times that tells you that is not real or you're not allowed to go there or something like that the other recommendation i don't think i mentioned is you really want to try to be you really want to try to be positive you want to be positive enthusiastic helpful all that stuff um extroverted and i'm not always like that uh i can sometimes get a little bit negative about things uh, and i'm not an extrovert normally that's come to me over years of trying I'm really, I, I'm a quiet person. I, I think people would know who know me in real life would say. So <clears throat> to be extroverted to when we have the meetings and, and say, try to say hello to as many people as I can and introduce myself, it's a little bit challenging, but I think it really helps because sometimes people come there just themselves. And I, I can imagine it's kind of boring or lonely or not really what they expected. If they come to the ride, don't say hello to anybody finish the ride and go home and actually I've done that before not even on like special rides like this but on races I've been to races where I just showed up <clears throat> and it's happened actually a lot of times comes to mind the last half marathon I did I think I like said a few words to a couple other runners while in the race but I didn't have a discussion with anybody I didn't it was just and it wasn't sad I was happy I'm really I was happy to do it but I can I can kind of feel like if you're coming all the way out here you're hoping that maybe you can meet somebody you can just like have a nice talk with somebody or something so if i see anybody especially that's just on their own i try to come over and, and say hello to them introduce myself and maybe just ask them like what how did you find this ride you know and welcome to the ride i'm glad you came how did you find us you know stuff like that to get the conversation going where are you from all that stuff anyway where am i at <clears throat> so this is the most rambling video ever. But anyway, basically you need to use your social medias a lot, make an email list available, 
be really open to everybody. Oh, I remember the other point. Hey, there's, here comes a rider. Whew. How you doing? Anyway, and the last point I was trying to say, I was trying to remember, is be consistent. This is probably the most important one because I've actually seen some other uh, attempts to get groups going, whether it be here in Titusville or in other nearby cities that ultimately didn't work out. And literally the, the organizers I've talked to, they're just kind of like, nobody wants to show up. But then if I look at like their Facebook events for their page, they're very, very inconsistent, you know? So I think it's critical that you just show up every single time. And if you yourself can't show up, find try to find somebody else who can do it for you. I have a couple people now in the group who are really consistent. And if I can't make it for any reason, I just ask them if, hey, if you can, can you, I'll host it, I'll set it up on Facebook, I'll send the emails out. But, you know, can you just make sure to show up because uh, I won't be able to make it. And, and I've always had help with that. So, and that's another thing. If you can find somebody in your group who's like pretty dedicated to the whole idea and stuff, definitely work with them, be open with them and let them help you. I found a few people that have helped me with some things. I wouldn't mind finding more help. In fact, one thing as I've always said, and I, and I told everybody is if you want to organize a, a ride, go ahead, feel free to do it. It doesn't have to only be the rides I organize because one day I'll probably move away and, and you know I hope that I hope that the rides keep going so I haven't yet found somebody who wants to do that it, it seems that people are a little bit intimidated by the idea of hosting a ride and I get it I was too I guess at the beginning because there's a lot to be worried about like what if somebody gets mad or somebody gets hurt you know all kinds of things you can imagine if you want anyway I think this video has been long and rambling enough all I wanted to say with it is, if you don't have a biking community in your area, or at least the type of biking community you're into, like there is road bike, uh, like fast road bikers here in, in my city, but I'm not really into that type of riding. So what I'm saying is if you don't have a cycling community that fits you, just go ahead and try to make it. All you need to do, set up a Facebook group, invite some friends, invite as many people as you can, um, also, by the way, I make flyers. I, I printed out flyers. I don't really know if anybody's come via the flyers, but uh, that's there too. And I, I put them around the coffee shops, the restaurants, wherever I'm allowed. Whenever I'm out, I, I, if I remember, I have them in my backpack and I'll just post them up. So anyway, create the, all you have to do is create the Facebook group, um, invite as many people as you can, try to get the word out. You may start off with like five riders. I've definitely had days early on where we only had like five people show up but if you're just consistent ask them to ask their friends and i don't remember if i mentioned it before really critically like i said facebook is probably the biggest draw for me facebook uh, groups but when i create an event first of all i've joined all the other local facebook groups like port st john group titusville talk and there's like probably a dozen groups i'm in local groups just general groups and when I create a event for our rides, I, I share those, there's like a share button with all those groups. I've only had one administrator complain and say, you know, please don't do that, uh, it's too much, whatever. So every second week or more, because sometimes I'll make a last one like a few days before the event as a reminder, only one time out of dozens of times I've done this, has anybody said anything or complained in any way? So don't worry about it, just share them. If somebody complains, you know, if it's an administrator or something, obviously respect their rules, but no problem. Like, like the one person who said, please don't do it, I don't do it anymore. Um, so yeah, anyway, with those sh sharing those groups out, every time I share to those like dozen, a dozen group or so, I probably get 10, 10 new people wanting to join our group right after, you know, within 24 hours. I'll get just like a lot of people uh, requesting to join. Anyway, I think I've probably said enough about it. If you do want to build a cycling community or improve on the one you already have, just go out there and do it. Don't be afraid. And uh, if you have any questions about anything that I can help with with my experience or any comments or any suggestions too, please do let me know because um, I've been doing it for, like I said, 
uh, over a year, year, nine months, but I know there's a lot still to learn. And I probably didn't remember to tell you everything, so uh, please feel free to jump down. Okay, here we are. Now we are off of the gravel road and we're onto a trail. This is the real wild area. This is the loop that I'm trying to figure out. We're really low down, close by the water. There's a gator right there. Whoa. But yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of gators out here. Right where I'm riding, right on the surface. I'm sure there's gators that lay out here. We may see one, we may not. I grew up around here, around gators, and I'm not really too worried about them. Typically, they're kind of like big lizards. Uh, you don't mess with them, they won't mess with you, typically. Much new out here, haven't seen any more gators. The road here, the trail here is mostly grassy and a bit bumpy. Here's a little bit of sand. Okay, the grass has gotten quite a bit higher and it's very bumpy. But um, we're still moving very slow at about a jogging pace, I would say. I don't have any bike computer today, so I don't really know how much further I have, but I think it's not that much further. I can see some power lines out in the distance. So we're probably near the main road. But at this pace, it's going to take a while. Wow, I made it. Here's the end of the loop. Now we're still in the park. Oh, but that's, a, that's the end of that awful grass loop. I mean, it was a cool adventure and I'm glad I did it, but I don't think I'll do it again. It's just, you know, it's just slow and difficult. But it is beautiful and peaceful, so who knows? Maybe I'll do it again. Alright, I think that's about it for the video. Thanks everybody for watching. See you next time.